I'm Christina. If you follow my channel, you know that as I'm learning a free motion quilt on my domestic machine, I'm sharing what I learn along the way. And I've been struggling with what to record on my channel because this is such a difficult time for everybody. And I don't want to be disrespectful um, of acknowledging how difficult this time is, but I also know that free motion quilting is such a great escape. It's a mental escape for me and it's therapeutic. So I know it can be really helpful. There are weeks where I have very little energy and weeks where I have more energy. And I'm also home with my family seven days a week. So it's really challenging to find quiet moments to even record the segments for my videos. But I think I'm just going to continue to pop on whenever I have a quiet few minutes and, and record segments. So today I'm gonna announce a new project that I'm actually going to be basting, which is why I'm sitting on my floor right now. I'm gonna share this project in the same way that I've shared my other projects. I'm gonna take you with me from beginning through the end of the project and share what I learn along the way. And in typical me fashion, this is something I've never done before. So there's some risk involved and I'm crossing my fingers that it works out, but I grow best as a free motion quilter by challenging myself and putting myself in situations that make me feel a little bit uncomfortable. And I learn best from the mistakes. I learn best from facing those challenges and problem solving how to deal with them and taking that knowledge to the next project. So over time, I get better and better and better at free motion quilting. And I hope that what I learn helps you as you free motion quilt on your home sewing machine. I'm really excited about my next project. And that is this Wyndham Fabrics Milestones panel. And basically you put your baby in the center of this ring of flowers, and then you circle the number that indicates the age of the baby. And this panel is so pretty. I feel really grateful that I get to work on this project. The owner of my local quilt shop asked if I would like to do some custom free motion quilting on this panel using my domestic sewing machine so that he can hang it in the shop as a sample. He does all over edge to edge on a long arm, but no custom work. So I am really excited and grateful for this opportunity. I'm excited about this project for a few reasons. The first is that I have been wanting to free motion quilt a panel for a while now. Um, I'm just interested in seeing how it feels to trace the elements and then fill in all of that empty space. The other thing that I'm super excited about is this panel happens to be a floral. And if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know how much I love to quilt florals and feathers and I've never done this before on a quilt, only on scraps. So I'm really excited about that and if I'm able to fill in all the space and how it looks when it's done. And I am going to take you through that process. My, where I start, what goes right, what doesn't go, what doesn't go well, what I would do differently next time. And I don't know how much I'll be able to show because the white thread on the white fabric, but I'll do my best to show what I can and at least teach the lessons I learned along the way. I think what I'm gonna do is split this video into two parts. So my husband's about to start cooking dinner, but I definitely wanna show you how I basted this quilt and the supplies I used and some of the discussion around all of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and include the rest of the basting portion of this video in part one, and then I'll create another video, part two, where I cover the free motion quilting part of this project. If there's any chance that you're still with me as I'm creating these videos from quarantine, like today from my kitchen floor. And if you knew how many times I stopped the camera because of the noise in this house. <laughs> Anyways, don't forget to like this video. And if you would like notifications when new videos are released, don't forget to subscribe. In my video, how to free motion quilt, a baby quilt or a lap quilt, which I'll link above, I talked about how I based my quilts, but I wanted to make sure that I covered that again in this video so that you can see the whole project from beginning to end. And I like to use a light amount of spray based in my pro my projects. There's many different ways to baste and I'm just showing you one way, the way that works for me. I get a nice smooth back and a nice smooth top when I use this method. And I like the fabric to shift while I'm working. Um, so 
that's just the way I like to do it. I just wanted to make sure that I shared the way I do it because it'll just give you another way to try and see what works best for you. My heater's running in the background, so please just ignore the noise, but I wanted to give a quick little bit of clarification around why I like the fabric to shift as I'm free motion quilting. I find that if I use a lot of spray based and my, my quilt is sandwiched together really well, as I free motion quilt, that fabric naturally wants to move a little bit. And so if it's basically glued together, then it's not allowing that movement. And so then I get puckers or overlapping fabric. But if I, if I spray base lightly, then it allows for that fabric to move as I'm free motion quilting the fabric out. And so I end up with a smooth top and a smooth back. So that's what I mean about allowing the fabric to shift as I work. In that video, how to free motion quilt a baby quilt or lap quilt, I talked a little bit about the kind of spray based I'm currently using, which is Taylor brand. I like how sticky it is. I like how long it lasts and how little of it I need to do the job the way I like it done. But before I used Taylor brand, I used 505 and this worked fine too. I'm going to use that in this project because this is what the quilt shop carries. But again, I say experiment, put it on some scraps, play around, see what you like better. So much of this is just about personal preference or how your machine reacts to some of these decisions you're making. And by just playing around and experimenting, you can find what is going to do the best job to get you some beautiful free motion quilting. A few quick things I wanna say about spray basting is that I recommend researching what the long-term effects could be of spray based on your quilts um, down the road over a long period of time. And whether or not you should be spray basting directly on your quilt tops, right? On the fabric versus the batting. Personally, I spray based wherever. I don't really pay attention to that and I haven't had any negative repercussions from that, but that doesn't mean that they won't happen. So I would research that for yourself and not just do as I do. Um, and then the other thing is spray basting in the ventilated area. Um, you should do some research on that because you're supposed to have a nice open airy area so you're not breathing in the basting spray. I have wood floors and I spray based right on my wood floors, but I am in no way recommending that you do this. There is a residue that's left behind. I mop after and that residue comes right up. But just because I have not had a negative experience doing this doesn't mean that you won't. So I, I don't want anybody upset with me um, if you decide to spray based on your floors and then somehow your floors get damaged. Um, so. I'm just sharing what I do and what works for me, but it is not necessarily a recommendation to do the same. So basically, I think it's best to read the back of the can and then research and make a decision to see what type of basting is right for you. I don't know what I'm gonna learn about basting spray down the road or even five years from now that may lead me to change my mind or continue to be happy using it. So. I'm always careful, I don't want to give recommendations or advice suggesting that somebody do something the same way that I am doing it because we don't always see the long-term impact of those decisions. And so my advice is always to research for yourself and just make the best decision that works for you. I wanna talk about battings for one quick second. The quilt shop owner gave me Quilter's Dream 100% cotton batting to use in this project and I've never felt Quilter's Dream cotton batting before, and it is so soft. I was pleasantly surprised at how soft it is. The downside of using 100% cotton batting is that it's going to have a very flat look with the quilting. When you use something like a polyester or wool, which I've experimented with on a scrap and, and really liked, um, you get a puff to the quilt. Your quilting takes on some dimension and I'm not gonna get that with this 100% cotton batting, but that's okay because as I work and experiment with different battings, I wanna show what those look like on my videos and so that you can make an educated choice for yourself when you're choosing battings. 
I'm about to show you how I spray based on the floor. And then after that segment, I want to talk a little bit about the steps I take after that, which helped me to get a nice smooth back and top. So I have a layer of the quilt or the panel, the batting and the backing. And my backing is taped to the floor. And basically what I do is just roll the batting and quilt up, do a light baste, spread the batting back out nice and flat. And then do the same thing on the batting. Again, nice and flat. And then I do the exact same thing to the top half. When I showed you this panel a few minutes ago, you probably noticed that it was already basted and that there were a lot of wrinkles on the front of the panel. And that's because I'm moving it around so much while I record these segments, but I'm not worried about it one bit. And that's because after I finish spray basting my quilts, I always bring them straight to my ironing board where I press the quilt top nice and flat and I put a few pins in where I need them to hold the fabric. I also do the back if it's 100% cotton back. Minky's another topic for another day. Um, but I press the back if it needs it. And um, I then do this throughout the free motion quilting process. So I'll tell you a little bit about that. I'm trying to figure out how to do, explain this next part in a way that makes sense. But if you have your quilt and it's all spray basted and you take it over to your machine, as you start to put the stitches in, your fabric starts to shift. And I have found in the past that if I put a lot of spray based, my fabric couldn't move naturally. And so I would get these little areas where it puckered up and then I'm just quilting over it and then I have overlapping fabric or puckers in my final product. When I started just using very light spray based, I found that it's enough to keep the quilt sandwich together, but it still allows movement of that fabric. The other great thing about it is that if I see that the fabric's shifted in a way that I don't like, maybe things are getting out of line or I look like I'm gonna get some puckers. I just take my quilt over to my ironing board, press that section, put a few pins in it, and take it back to my machine to continue free motion quilting. And a great time to check your quilt, it, I check it more frequently than this, but a great time to check your quilt is when you are changing your bobbin. You're already cutting your threads. So go ahead and bring it over to your ironing board, inspect it, and see how the free motion quilting's looking and if it needs a pressing. 
and I get a great result using this method. But again, it's not the only method. This is just a method that works for me, and so I want to share it. I hope you found this information helpful. I think it's so incredibly disappointing when you finish free motion quilting a beautiful quilt only to discover that there's puckers and overlapping fabric stitched down. I know it's possible to have a smooth top and a smooth back. So anything I can do to share suggestions on how to get that is what I wanna do. If you have a method that you find works well for you, please share that in the comments. It gives us a way to share information and learn from one another so we can all improve our free motion quilting. And if you have any questions, leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them.